Hey, good morning, family. I'm so glad that you decided to take a minute and uh, watch our service with us today. We're so glad that you're here. Uh, service is gonna begin in about three minutes, so go ahead and grab everybody together, grab your cup of coffee, uh, whatever you need to do, wake up the kids, do every, whatever last minute preparation you need to do for service to begin. We'll begin in about three minutes. Hey, good morning, family. I'm so glad that you decided to join us uh, this morning for our worship experience together. Obviously, we are still in this realm where things are a little bit different. I'm in the building by myself uh, this morning, actually, and so um, I'm ready for people to be here. But I've got an exciting announcement coming up for you here in just a little bit. So uh, stay with me and hang with me for a little while, and we're going to make that announcement. I believe that it's something that you will be excited about, something that uh, God's going to use to make a great day for us. But uh, in just a moment, we're going to go into a time of worship. And I told you already, our worship team has prepared some worship songs for us. And we're going to worship together corporately. So don't be afraid. Sing out loud. Worship with your kids. Worship as a family. And let's lead our family in worship this morning. I believe that it would be a great thing. Uh, if you're here this morning and you're watching this, we've asked you every, every week. And last week we had some technical issues. Hopefully this, e this uh, week those issues are resolved. So if you would text the word HERE to 910-401-3300, it just lets us know that you're here, lets us know you're joining us in service today, and we would greatly appreciate that. Again, you can text the word HERE to 910-401-3300 just to let us know that you're joining us online today. I'm going to pray for us, and then we're going to roll right into a time of worship. Father, I love you, Lord. I thank you for your goodness, your grace, your mercy, God, that you put on us 
each and every day, Father. I thank you that when I woke up this morning, God, your mercies had renewed uh, from my life, Lord, and I woke up to a new day. I woke up to a new uh, time with you, Father, a new time in your presence. I thank you for that. God, I pray that you bless every person that's under the sound of my voice, and as we enter into this time of worship, God, I pray that it would be received as a worship offering to you. I pray that you bless this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Again, good morning. I'm glad you're here. Let's worship together.
Hey, good morning, family. I am so glad you're here. Thank you so much for taking the time this morning uh, to join with us and watch our online worship experience today. Uh, if you're just joining us, thank you for being here. I'm so thankful for you. I'm thankful that you carve out time throughout your week to uh, watch this service, to listen to this service. However, we are able to get it to you. I appreciate that. Obviously, we're not together. Or, frankly, I'm tired of it. I'm ready uh, for you and I to be in the same room together. I'm tired of talking to an empty room, and I'm ready for you to be here and for us to be together as a family, celebrating together. Sure, we're the church. Sure, uh, ministry's taking place, and sure, our families are being ministered to, but it is time for the family to come together and sit around a table and feast on the Word of God together. And so that's what I'm ready for. Um, just as I've been telling you every week, if you don't mind, if you would take out your cell phone and text the word HERE, H-E-R-E, to 910-401-3300, whether you're watching today uh, on Sunday or whether you're watching later in the week, it doesn't matter. Whenever you watch this video, uh, we just want to kind of know who we're reaching, how we're reaching. So if you would text the word HERE not to 910-401-3300, 
We would greatly appreciate that. That is our text number. You can actually text uh, different keywords to that. If you want to send a custom text, it actually comes to my cell phone. I get that text message. Uh, but if you want to get those auto responses back in order for you to be able to give, uh, get a prayer request, or even let us know that you're here, we would need you to text those specific words. So you can text the word here to check in with us. You can text the word give to give online. You get a quick link back. You just go right there. In a matter of just a couple minutes, you can give online. Or you can text the word pray. If you've got a prayer request, you can text the word pray and uh, we will get, you get, a form will be sent right back to you. Then it's sent to us. We can get that word out. We can be praying for you and then we can follow up with you on that prayer request and check on what God's actually doing in your life and how he's moving in that situation. Uh, we want to connect with you any way that we possibly can. We have had some issues. Um, those that may or may not know, we tried to provide a service where you could call in. For those that don't have internet access, they could call in and listen to our messages online. Uh, we tried a couple different avenues with that. We're trying something different again. So today, uh, if you know somebody that's not able to watch this online, they're not able to watch this video, they can call 910-401-3300. Nobody's going to pick up that phone. What's going to take place is if they hang on the line, sometimes it takes 15, 20 seconds, there's some dead space, but if they hang on the line, the audio recording will start playing and they will hear this message from today. So have them call in anytime whatsoever between um, now and next weekend, this coming weekend. Uh, they can call in anytime this week, doesn't matter when it is, day or night, they can call in and they can call 910-401-3300 and they can listen to this message from today. So encourage somebody to do that. Uh, we're doing our best any way possible to make sure that the message is, is connected with everybody that wants to receive it, anybody that would want to hear. So um, be sure to spread that word. You can give that phone number to anybody you want to, and they can either text a prayer request. It doesn't matter. We're not specific to our church family. Um, anybody that wants prayer, anybody that's got a need, anybody that wants to give, anybody that wants to connect with us can use that phone number. So be sure to keep that in mind. Um, I've got a great announcement that I want to tell you. And I already uh, maybe have announced it to you yesterday. You got a one call um, Friday, actually. And I want to, to just reiterate this and tell you kind of what's going on. Next Sunday, May the 10th, is Mother's Day. And we have been working hard, working diligently to try to process and figure out a way to come together, unify together as a family, and have a worship service together. So what we're going to do Next Sunday, May 10th at 1045 in our parking lots here on the church property, we're going to have a drive-in worship service. I need your help. Um, the regulations are very strict on this. We're going to do our best to do our due diligence. You'll need to park where you're instructed to park. Uh, you will need to make sure you stay in your car at all times. You're not allowed to get out of your car. We're going to keep our worship service short. Uh, it'll be under an hour, so restrooms maybe won't be an issue because you need to stay in your car. So we're going to do our best to keep our worship time short uh, to allow you to come in, be together as a family, worship together, hear the Word of God, just celebrate Mother's, celebrate Mother's Day, um, and celebrate the goodness of the Lord. And then we'll go on about our way. But I believe that it's going to be an awesome day for the Lord to work in us and work through us, even though we can't physically touch and we can't be uh, our touchy, huggy, lovey people that we are. We can still see each other and we can make contact. And I believe it's going to be a great day. So I'm looking forward to that 1045 next Sunday, May the 10th, which is going to be Mother's Day. Um, let's move forward into the Word of God, if you will. Last Sunday, I preached a message to you. I actually did last two Sundays titled In Person, and it's Encounters with Jesus After He Had Resurrected. Last week, I kind of got on a fishing theme, and it was on my mind, and uh, not really intentionally, but today kind of follows suit with that just a little bit, and I want to preach a message that I've entitled, A Man Overboard. I want us to look at this. Um, I've heard this saying all throughout this journey that we're all in the same storm, but on different boats. We're all in the same storm, but we're in different boats. You could say it another way, we're all in the same storm, but not on the same boat. And uh, I want to kind of look at that and dive into that thought today. 
Real quick, before we move forward, I want to pray for us, if you will. Father, I love you. I thank you, God, for your goodness and grace. God, I thank you for a beautiful time that we have together this morning. Father, I thank you that I can deliver the word of God uh, with boldness and power. Father, I pray for an anointing, God, that would allow that to take place. I pray that your presence be felt in the rooms and the places, wherever the people are watching this video, wherever they may listen to the audio later, God, I pray that your presence would be felt there the same way that it is here. And God, I pray that your people would be blessed. Open our hearts, our minds, and our ears today to what you would say to us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We're all in the same boat and in the same storm, but not in the same boat. We're all in the same storm, but we maintain different boats. I want us to look at that. That's been a thought um, that kind of has come to my mind and I did not come up with that. I've seen it all over. I'm sure that you've seen it too. There's a couple quotes that have been made by different people. Nobody really will attribute them to anybody. But we're all in the same storm, but not in the same boat. Well, what does it mean? It means that you and I are going through this pandemic together. We're going through this crisis together. Everybody is affected in their own way, but everybody is actually affected. Obviously, we in eastern North Carolina are not experiencing the same uh, situation, the same uh, harshness, and or just to be real, the same mortality issues, the death issues, such as New York City. But that doesn't mean that we here in North Carolina are not experiencing our own hardships and our hardships are not as real to us as those are to somewhere else that they're experiencing some that some might would view as more hard, right? So all of us are in the same storm, but we're in different boats. It's amazing to me how when crisis shows up, uh, it, it always brings people together. You know, we have our bickering, we've got our issues, we have our differences, we've got our, our things that separate us, that segregate us. But yet when crisis shows up, all of those boundaries are broken down and everything kind of falls down. We rise above those, if you will, almost those, those childish things. If you've been our Thurs in our Thursday Night Connect group uh, last night, our Thursday night, we talked about... Um, the maturity and growing up, Paul said, basically, just grow up, get over your, your differences, get over your immaturities, be mature in Christ and be unified. And it's amazing how whenever we face crisis or face tragedy in our life, we rise above the things that are little, we rise above the immature things that separate us, and we become unified as a group of people to help each other and to lift each other up. In times of, of tragedy and disaster, neighbors help neighbors. People have a way of setting aside the differences for the, as the bigger things arise. The more that I pondered this statement um, that we're all in the same storm but different boats, the more I ponder this, I, I, as I've heard it several times, the more I've come to the conclusion that isn't that uh, something always taking place? This is nothing new. It's a statement that's just come about. It's a statement that as we've gone through this pandemic, it's kind of been one that's ring true for this situation. But in life, it's extremely accurate and it's very true that you and I are always in the storm of life, yet we're on different boats. Why does it take tragedy? Why does it take disaster? Why does it take utter chaos to bring unity for us and allow us to see change? It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I had a pastor friend tell me a while back, uh, he, he was talking about a statistic, and we were discussing pastoring, and he says, statistically speaking, uh, every person within 18 to 24 months is going to experience tragic, uh, a tragedy or loss in their life. Within 18 to 24 months, every person is going to experience a tragedy or loss in their life. We were discussing pastoring, and we were saying that everybody needs a pastor. They need somebody in their life. They need somebody to lift them up. We need support is what it basically uh, boils down to. We need God to be there for us. And realistically, there's no way around it. Statistically, you're going to face some kind of disaster within 18 to 24 months, and you're going to need people to be there to lift you up. If this is true, doesn't it make sense that we're all in different boats trying to cross the sea of life, and we're all facing all these different situations, and at some point, a storm is going to come up. If statistics are true, and truthfully, we will experience tragedy or loss within 24 months, that means that you and I are constantly on the sea of life, and at some point, a storm's going to rise. It's not going to look like mine. Mine's not going to look like yours, but we're all on different boats, but trying to cross the sea of life, we're going to face some stuff. We're going to face some storms that are going to pull us back, that are going to tear us down, and we're going to need direction. 
In Mark chapter 6, Jesus has uh, just, him and his disciples, it's interesting, I want to word this correctly, Jesus, through his disciples, just fed over 5,000 people. Why is that important? Well, you need to understand that as a disciple of Christ, Jesus is going to empower you and he's going to bless what you have. He's going to bless the gifts and the abilities that you have. And through you, Jesus is in turn going to feed his people. That's extremely important. And in, in chapter 6, he's just finished that and they've just fed these people. And Jesus sends the disciples across the lake and across the sea. And I want to read this to you. This is Mark chapter 6, beginning in verse 45. It says, Immediately Jesus made his disciples get into a boat and go ahead of him the other side of Bethsaida, while he himself was sending the crowd away. After bidding them farewell, he left for the mountain to pray. We need to, to pay attention to Jesus' example. Um, while he sent them away, he sent his disciples away, he sent the people away, he bid them farewell, he said his goodbyes, he himself secluded himself to a time of prayer. Verse 47, when it was evening, the boat was in the middle of the sea and he was alone on land. Seeing them straining at the oars, for the wind was against them, at about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. And he intended to pass by them, but when they saw him walking on the sea, they supposed that it was a ghost and cried out, for they saw him and were terrified. But immediately he spoke with them and said to them, Now take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. When he got into the boat, then he got into the boat with them, and the wind stopped. And they were utterly astonished, for they had not gained any insight from the incident of the loaves, for their hearts was hardened. Jesus has sent his disciples on before him. Jesus, all-knowing, all-powerful, at, every, uh, at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess, the winds and the waves obey Jesus. Jesus knows everything. Send the guys that were the closest to him that he had chosen, sent them across the sea into which they were going to face struggle, they were going to face opposition, Ultimately, they were going to face the storm, yet he knew exactly where they were. He sends them out, and the Bible says that at evening, or, or late that night, if you will, at evening time, they were at the sea, and he was on the land. He was standing by watching them. And as time went on, they were struggling against the wind. I don't know if you've ever tried to paddle a boat or a kayak against the wind, but it's absolutely horrible. Uh, we've been out uh, just in the intercoastal waterway out into the sound in a boat that had a motor on it fighting against the wind, and that in itself is horrible. I've got a horror story that I could tell you where we decided to go out to the lighthouse outside of um, off the coast of North Carolina last summer, and we took a boat, and on the way there, it was beautiful, gorgeous. It was like, man, this is absolutely amazing. Little did we know, we're going with the wind. On the way back, we turned around to go back, and we're against the wind. The water is extremely rough. Water is blowing up in our faces. We're soaking wet. I got uh, the two kids, and Micah, and my mom and dad were with us, and I'm trying to keep the babies dry with towels, and the towels are soaking wet. We're soaking wet. It is absolutely miserable to go against the wind. It's not easy, and it's no fun. But if you've never done it, you should give it a try just to understand what it's like. And at the fourth watch, or what we would know as 3 a.m., Jesus is walking by. you got to understand Three hours at least have passed by because at the beginning of this it says now at late in the evening or, or late at night. That means that the day has not yet tripped to the following day. So at least before midnight, now three hours later at the fourth watch, three hours later at 3 a.m., Jesus is walking by. He let them struggle for hours before he ever decides to walk by. He was always there. He never left them, but they struggled for three hours. I wonder how many times our life is a struggle and how many things we're facing. And, and really, it's, it's to put us in a situation to make us stronger and it's to make us better. And you've heard the saying, what don't kill you makes you stronger. And that's cliche. And maybe that's not true. But realistically, what's taking place is Jesus sent these disciples into the sea. He sent them ahead of himself. He knew that the storm was coming. He knew they were going to face opposition. And now for three hours before he ever even walks by, he's let them struggle. So he walks by, and, and what's interesting is they yell out, not 
out of uh, help. They're not crying out for, for desperation. They're crying out out of fear. They see Jesus. They think he's a ghost. They really don't even recognize him. They don't know what's taking place. They cry out. They yell out, Jesus, or, or they're crying out, yeah, well, yelling out out of fear. And Jesus shows up and he says, hey, take courage. It's I. Don't be afraid. Take courage. It's I. Don't be afraid. His intention was to walk on by. That's harsh. You know, we as human beings have a tendency sometimes to see people struggling and in our flesh we continue walking by rather than stopping and helping. And Jesus, even in who he was, has made a decision. He intended, the Bible says he intended to walk on by. And as they cried out in fear because of this ghost on the water, he stopped. He said, hey, take courage. It's I. Don't be afraid. And, and what took place then is he got into the boat. And when he got into the boat, the wind stopped. It ceased. Everything settled. I want to make three quick observations for you that I believe the Lord wants us to hear today. First of all, sometimes we're sent into uncharted waters. That word, uh, uncharted, has been said over and over and over through this pandemic. Through this season that we've gone through, it's, it's been uncharted waters. Well, I believe that Jesus sent those disciples into uncharted waters. They had never been there before. They had never experienced uh, the, the, the wind and the waves like they were going to experience in that night. Maybe they had crossed the sea. Maybe they had, maybe they had made that journey, but they had never made it quite like they were going to make it this night. Sometimes we're sent in uncharted waters. There's a couple things that we have to remember about that. First of all, they were sent. They followed direction. They were obedient. Knowing that they were leaving Jesus on the shore, knowing that they were leaving him, they still got in the boat and they set out across the sea. Secondly, we recognize that he knew where they were the entire time. He gave the plan. And as long as they stuck to the plan, he knew where they were constantly. But sometimes we're sent into uncharted waters. Secondly, I want to tell you, we aren't alone at sea. See, we're all on the sea in the storm, just not the same boat. We are all there together. Micah and I were blessed, and we were able to take a, a cruise back in January. And, and one thing was so interesting to me. Uh, one night, I had never been on a cruise before. One night, the boat's rocking, and it was rocking pretty hard. And uh, we were in the dining room, and the curtains were moving back and forth, and we're trying to walk, and you're, you're kind of all whatever. And we went and stood out on the deck of the, the ship, and we looked out, and there's other cruise ships beside us. Now, when we left port... To our knowledge, we left on our own. And now here we are in the middle of the pitch black sea, the pitch black ocean where there's nothing around us. We can't see anything around us. We're going across the ocean and it's pitch black all around us except when you look out, there's a cruise ship, actually two cruise ships off in a distance. There was something about knowing in this water and these, these waves are rolling in, the boat's rocking. There was something about knowing that you aren't alone. There was something about knowing that when I looked out, that, that if this boat were to shut down right now and we were to be stranded in this place right now, there's two other cruise ships that could somehow get us help and get us off this boat to save us. There's power in knowing you are not alone. Not only, though, do we have each other, but Jesus never left them. He went to the mountain to pray, but I believe even as he was up on the mountain to pray, I believe he could look down on that sea and see exactly where they were. Late at night, it says he was standing on the shore and they were in the middle of the sea. He was still there. When it got rough, when the, the later the night went at 3 a.m., he was there on the sea himself with them. He never left them. So even though we're sent into uncharted waters and even though we're put in places that are uncomfortable and even though we're facing opposition and we're facing trial through whatever it is in life, we're not alone. We're all on the same sea in the same storm. We just happen to be on different boats. And Jesus has never left us. 
the last thing I want to tell you is let him in your boat. That sounds cliche. That sounds simple. Well, duh, let him in your boat. Jesus, come get on my boat. I want you on my boat. Well, yeah, obviously, we want him on our boat. But how real is it? you got to understand, when they yelled out, they didn't recognize it was Jesus they were yelling at. It took fear for them to cry out and for Jesus to step on their boat. He intended to pass by. He intended to walk on by them, but yet out of fear of what in the world we see walking on the water. They cry out. They grab Jesus' attention. And he says, take courage, it's I. Don't be afraid. I believe this represents something in your life that God's calling you to do. He, he's wanting you to, to show, he's wanting to show you something. He's wanting you to see something. And to you, it doesn't look like anything that makes any sense. It doesn't look like anything that you would take part in. It's a calling. It's a gifting. It's something God's encouraging you to do. And to you, you're, you're crying out, I'm not having anything to do with that. That is terrifying to me. But what's really taking place is Jesus is walking by, and he's intending to walk on by your boat, and he's waiting on you to cry out, and, and you're going to reach out, and you're going to make a difference, and you're going to let him on your boat. Because when he got on their boat, the wind stopped. I know what the Bible says. I know that the wind ceased. And I, I believe the word literally for what it says. I read the word to my very best ability for the most literal word of God I can read. And it says, then he got on the boat with them and the wind stopped. I have to wonder though, did the wind stop? Or did it shift directions? Because when you're rowing with the wind, when you're on a boat going with the wind, you don't even know the wind's blowing. Hmm. This is good. When you're flowing in the direction of the wind, you don't even recognize that the wind is blowing. See, I have to think, that when they let Jesus on the boat, when Jesus stepped on the boat, it says that the wind stopped, it ceased. But I almost feel like that the wind shifted directions. And now all of a sudden, instead of going against the wind, and instead of wearing their self out with the oars and straining at the oars of the word said, as they're trying to go against the wind, I believe that the wind shifted. And instead of them going against their trial and against their struggle, they embraced their struggle and what happened was, when they embraced that thing that was coming against them, they embraced the opposition, and they said, you know what? If God be for me, who can be against me? God's planted me in this situation. There's nothing that can be formed against me to destroy me. I can make it through this. God's on my boat. I don't have to fear. I don't have to be afraid. And all of a sudden, the wind shifted, and they embraced that opposition, and now it felt like the wind had stopped, but I believe God was using that thing, the wind. He was using the trial, the opposition, the struggle, to push them to the other side. Jesus needs to be on your boat. They were no longer against the wind. Where are we today? See, I believe we're all on the same sea in the same storm, but we're on different boats. It has nothing to do with coronavirus. That statement exists throughout all of life. That statement has existed since the beginning, and that statement will be true to the end. If we look around us, there's a cruise ship somewhere beside us. They might not be experiencing what I'm experiencing on this boat. Their life might not be like mine is, and mine very well may not be what theirs is. But we're all in this together. Sometimes we're sent into uncharted waters. And sometimes we're sent into situations and we're going to face situations that make no sense whatsoever. I believe that you needed to be encouraged today and you need to recognize you're not alone. Everybody is in a boat. Everybody's on this sea together. We're all facing it. Here's a reality that's had to set in with me over the last couple weeks. 
thankfully, by the grace of God, I'm so thankful that I've not experienced death during this season. I've not experienced the hardship that many have experienced. I've not experienced the loss that so many people have experienced during this season. But my life's been changed, just like yours has. In some ways, very much so for the better. But there's been a disruption in my normal. And here's, here's the reality that I had to let sink in for me, just because I've not had tragedy strike during this season doesn't mean that my boat hasn't rocked. And it doesn't mean that Jesus doesn't have to be on my boat. You need to let Jesus on your boat today. Maybe you're not facing this huge life-threatening situation. Maybe you've got something going on in your life. You've got a decision that needs to be made. You need help with your kids. You've got financial issues you're trying to work through. I don't have no idea what it might be. Whatever that boat is that you're on, whatever area of your life, whatever part of your life that seems to be on a sea and you're rowing against the wind, God's coming, and I believe that He wants to get on your boat. I believe that He wants to do something in your life. And I, th I talked about it a little bit last week that it's not going to look traditional, it's not going to look conventional, it's not going to look like the, the method you would use, but God wants to move in a way that maybe in, in the beginning you don't even really recognize it's Him. But when He gets on your boat, I believe there's a transition and there's a shifting in the wind. And now all of a sudden things get a little easier. Maybe you've never asked Christ to come into your life and maybe you're sailing across the sea, if you will, and, and we're all in this storm together but on different boats. Maybe God's never come into your life and maybe you've never allowed him to do so. You've never invited him in. Today's a great day to do that. Today is a fantastic day for you to ask Christ into your life. Invite him onto your boat. I want to lead you in a prayer, and then I'm going to pray for everybody else. But I want to lead you in a prayer. If you've never asked Christ into your life, or maybe you've walked away from a relationship with him, and you, you, you've been doing this thing on your own, and you're ready for, for him to come back in, you're ready to let him back into your life, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I recognize I'm a sinner. I recognize I need a Savior. I realize, I realize that God, you love me enough that you sent your son to die on a cross for me and that he rose from the dead. Jesus, now you're alive. You gave your life, now I give you mine. Forgive me, make me new, change my life. Get on my boat in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for the rest of the people that are watching this video. God, those that are listening to this audio recording, Father, I pray that you bless them, God. Lord, let us recognize today and remember today that sometimes we're sent into uncharted waters for miracles to take place. Sometimes we're put in situations that are just uncomfortable, Lord. God, and I pray today we recognize we're not alone, Father. We've got each other. Lord, we, we have people around us that love us, that care about us, God. We've got each other. We're all in the same storm and on different boats, but we're still here together. Father, and I pray that we recognize you're here. You've never left us. You, you've never forsaken us, God. Your word tells us that. The promise is true. You'll never leave me. You'll never forsake me. Father, I pray that we let you on the boat today. God, I pray that as we let you into those places that we've been trying to handle on our own, that the struggle become a little easier. God, that we no longer row against the wind, God, but the wind would cease, or better yet, Lord, let it shift directions, that it pushes us and propels us. The very thing that's opposing us in this moment, God, I pray when you get on the boat would be what propels us into our destiny. Father, I thank you for this amazing time we've had together. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your people. I pray that you bless us in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hey, if Jesus did something for you today, you accepted Christ into your life, you believe that God's done something for you, we want to hear about it. I want to ask that you text the word Jesus to 910-401-3300. We'd love to hear about it. I love you dearly. Remember, next Sunday, we're meeting in the parking lots at 1045 for a Mother's Day service. 
I cannot wait to see you there. If you know somebody that should listen to this message, they can do so simply by calling into the phone number 910-401-3300. Let them hang on the line for just a little while, and this message is going to begin to play. I love you. God bless you. Have a great week.